All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by just up the road from LA by Peter Schroeder. How are you doing, Peter? Doing great. How are you? Yeah, fantastic. And Peter is an award-winning DJ and entrepreneur, entrepreneur who started Telzio, a company that's changing the way we work and communicate. With over two decades of experience, uh, he teamed up with big names like Facebook, Samsung, Airbnb. Uh, you've er you've earned more than 20 platinum records, 40 gold records, and received three nominations for the Danish DJ Awards. Well, congratulations. That's quite impressive. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and, and... And just just for the heck of it, then you also survived a plane crash. Yeah, why not? Uh, yeah, why not throw <laughs> that one in there? And your passionate determination to continue to inspire, continue to inspire. And what we're going to talk about today is overcoming overwhelm and the power of focus as an entrepreneur. Uh, so um, let's get straight into it, uh, Peter. Maybe just explain the plane crash thing first, so that because I'm sure that's the thing that probably people picked up on immediately. So just <laughs> explain that part and and what impact that had on you and how it's affected your journey. I think it's one of those little things that I probably took and put into this little box and locked away because I had totally forgotten about it until a few years ago when. Uh, we were having dinner, some 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 friends and I, and and we were just like sitting there and talking, and then this, it came up for some reason, and I was like, oh yeah, I was in that thing. Um, so there's probably something I need to talk to some professional person about at some point. But um, it was a, um, a turboprop a commuter airline uh, going from Copenhagen to Aalborg in Denmark, and they couldn't lock in the landing gear, and eventually when we circled around for a while and 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 they were ready to to make an attempt um what happened was it actually did collapse and the propeller well went through the uh fuselage and uh uh and all that but but the, no one got got seriously hurt so there was i think some lady broke broke her arm or something like that but that was it wow that's a still a, so that's, a, that's <laughs> an, an incredible experience okay so tell me a little bit about uh Telzio, and then we'll get into uh, entrepreneurship. But uh, tell me just a little bit about the company and, wh and what you're doing with that. Yeah, so Telzio uh, started out as a uh, business phone service provider for uh, startups, small businesses. And then over the years, um, we've been at it for 10 years now. So so over the years, the product has kind of developed and, and evolved into this whole communications uh, suite for um, for businesses, but we're still, you know, phone service and texting and those kind of things are the main things. Um, and yeah, we, we have a, a solution that we built ourselves in house that that works really well, scales well with with businesses uh, as they grow. And and then we're trying to be a little different in in terms of trying to be, you know, a fair company, mm -hmm. uh, which you can't really talk say about many uh, many phone service providers out there. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's really uh, the gist of it. Yeah. So, um, so as, as, as an entrepreneur, right. Uh, when you, when you first, like when you were launching this business, for instance, right. Uh, there's obviously, you know, a lot of ways you can go and it can become overwhelming and you say, Oh, we could go this way, but we could also do this and we could do that. Mm -hmm. And, and sometimes I, you know, that, that, as you said, that the power of focus is, is incredibly important actually figuring out which, which place, where you should place your bet and then focusing your attention on that rather than kind of chasing after any opportunity that pops up. Yeah, and that, that's something that comes anything but natural to me. I have raging ADD. Um, <laughs> so, uh, and, I, and I didn't know that until maybe four or five years ago. Um, never got diagnosed when I was a kid because back then it wasn't even a thing. Uh, right. You had ADHD where the kids, you know, couldn't sit still and all that. Mm -hmm. um, but that's not me. I, I was just not able to focus on things I'm not interested in. But on the other hand, things I'm interested in, I'm really, really, really good at focusing on. Um, uh, so, so it's been a learning curve, and 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 over the years, um, I, I've I've definitely had some some. Uh, uh, it, it definitely you know got me in trouble, and 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 uh, I, I can dive a little bit more into that. But but I would say uh, it's um, it's over 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 the years. I've I've kind of learned by myself how to really focus on on what I'm good at, and and try to to make that uh, a priority and then try and find people around me who are good at the things I'm not good at uh, or or the things I'm not interested in. 
Yeah. And what's interesting, uh, Peter, is that sometimes even in, in, in companies, right, you know, we always tend to focus on the things that people aren't any good at, right? You know, we're always trying to fix people and fix things, as opposed to exactly what you're saying right now is get people focused on the things they are good at yeah. and stop trying to make them good at things that they're never going to be good at. Yeah, and, and, and I think that's a, a typical uh, thing in the American uh, mm -hmm. corporate world that I have definitely seen when, when I moved here um, from Denmark, uh, you know, really coming in from, from outside and seeing how, how this does not work well. Um, I used to work at a, uh, a big media corporation in Denmark called Denmark Radio, which is like the BBC of Denmark, the national right. broadcast thing. And um, they had something called the Peter Principle. I, I, it, you might know about it. It has nothing to do with me, yeah. uh, but essentially, you know, uh, it, it goes goes something like you 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 don't want to promote people uh, just to promote them. Uh, if you have a software developer, for example, sitting there and really really good at writing software, why would you want to promote that person to be a leader just because that's what the rules say you do? Yeah. Uh, that person is probably going to be a horrible leader. Maybe not, but but you know, chances are that that person mm -hmm. doesn't even want to be a leader. Right. You know, why don't you just give that person some more of what he's good at and give him the pain raise so he stays on? That's much better. Yeah, yeah, we are. We are. Well, we, we become this. Uh, I, I think it's it's this lack of imagination. And we've established this idea that uh, in in a lot of jobs, like your only path to promotion or achievement or getting on is to be moved up to to manage people. And that's why everybody thinks that that's the that's the measure of success. Rather than, as you say, if you've got a top salesperson, figure out how you can help them to be even better and like expand and maybe earn more instead of just immediately making them a sales manager. And then you, you're you minus one great salesperson and you're plus one terrible sales manager. Yeah, exactly. And, 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 and you know, if, if, if it makes sense and if sure, that yeah. person has uh, aspirations to be, become a leader and, and, and all, then by all means do it, but don't do it just because that's what's the the book says you do that mm. that makes no sense yeah so when you when you started out on your on your journey even with with Telzio, right uh at at the beginning right you know so you have your goal and your vision and then sometimes like you know people set their goal and their vision and however big that is that's that's fine but then they sort of step back and they go ooh it's such, I'm such a long way away. Instead of looking at, you know, what is the next best step on the journey to where I'm going? And they get a little overwhelmed, to use your yeah. term, overwhelmed and maybe paralyzed a little. So how did you experience that when you first started out? So um, let me put it like this. I'm, I'm, I'm really good at taking small steps um, and, and, and not give myself those uh, those big things because think about it I, I i went out and started a phone company i was gonna essentially compete against at&t verizon t-mobile those kind of companies right they have billions of dollars oh yeah and i didn't have any investors i i my my wife and i cashed in her for 1k fourteen thousand dollars or something like that mm. to get started we had nothing so it makes absolutely no sense uh to to, to go do what we did but if you really start thinking about it, it does make sense. The math adds up and so on and so on and so on. You just have to not compare yourself uh, with all the big guys because, hey, you can't get to that from one day to another. Uh, yeah, you might have heard of, of one company once in a while that it does it, does it, but chances are you're not going to be them. Mm -hmm. So instead of that, um, focus on your own things. F focus on making sure that you build a, or make a good product and you can sell that product, market it, and then capture some customers and get a business going. Then set some small goals once in a while, you know, like uh, what, what now I achieved this, what's going to be the next milestone, right? But don't don't try and, 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 and compare yourself to the biggest in the world from day one. Uh, that's just going to give you stress and it's probably not going to happen. And eventually it probably will happen if you grind and, and, and keep going. But um, that, at least that's that's kind of what worked for me. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think it's interesting because today we live in this like culture where people think that you can do things instantaneously, you know, overnight success and <laughs> you know, blow up on YouTube or whatever it is. Uh, and the reality is, yeah, you, you may hear about a couple of these people who are hyper successful, like overnight, uh, but you don't hear about all the other ones who fail because, uh, as you said, it is a grind. And I think that's the thing is... Uh, is there no real shortcuts? You have to roll up your your sleeves at the beginning. Yeah. And I think that's maybe something that people, you know, 
maybe nowadays because of all this pervasive thing about shortcuts, people don't believe that as much, but uh, that's the only way to go. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, you know, I, I, I was thinking right now as you were saying it, who can I think of that had an overnight success? There's no such thing. I mean, yeah, maybe Mark Zuckerberg is the only one I can really that comes to mind because like, even, even if you say it's an overnight success, there's always a lot of work beforehand. It's not that they just went out and decided I'm gonna be a tech entrepreneur, and and before that they were they were you know backing uh, grocery bags or something, yeah. wh whatever it was, like something unrelated, right? So mm -hmm. no one has overnight success. There's always a lot of work, you know, in front of it. Yeah. And how important was the the mission to you? Because you mentioned something at the beginning that you wanted a, a company, you mm -hmm. wanted a telephone company that was going to be fair and and people were going to perceive as fair, right? And let's face it, most people's experience with telephone companies are, oh, hidden fees. Oh, thank you. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, so you sign me up at X amount, but every time I get my bill, I'm paying X plus Y plus Z. Mm -hmm. So tell me a little bit about that, how foundational was that to what you were doing to try and create something fair? So how much was that uh, part of the mission? Um, I don't think it's ever been been a mission per se. Um, I think it's just very engraved in 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 myself and and, and uh, Jonas, who's a co-founder, co um, who's also Danish. And, you know, we, we, we have this solidarity thing just completely uh, drilled into our brains that that um, that you got to you know be fair and 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 don't take advantage of other people and and then what i experienced when i started the company here um like i've had a couple of com other companies before but especially when i started a company here in, in in the us was everything is geared towards helping those who are already doing good so mm -hmm. if you're buying some kind of piece some some kind of software you typically see that there's a startup plan and a, and a, and, a, and, a, and a pro plan and an enterprise plan and then mm -hmm. you have to buy the enterprise plan to get all the features yep. that gives you an advantage and, and at a competitive edge. You can't afford that as a startup. So so already there, you are behind the ones who are already doing good, right? So that, that just doesn't you know, uh, sit well with me. So uh, what, I, what, I, what I really wanted to do is, is just like try and make it as, as simple, as easy as possible. So uh, for example, with our billing, um, we just say, well, you pay for what you use instead of paying a flat fee per user or whatever mm -hmm. you do. Uh, and then you get unlimited uh, in quotation marks because there's no such thing. Mm -hmm. Always some, some, some caveats, right? But, um, uh, and you probably don't need unlimited either. Um, instead of doing all that, let's just charge a, a fee per minute and per text and, and so on. And then, of course, we can give some bulk discounts if you uh, if you buy a lot of it. But mm -hmm. let's just, you know, we charge you for the for the minutes. So, and then we give you all the features from day one, no matter uh, you know what, how big your business is and or how many minutes you spend, you get all the features. So at least you can compete on that, right? Right. Um, I think I think that's like the core of it, uh, and and uh, we're just trying to to just be hey, let's let's not let's not try and and, and nickel and dime and, and and make as much money. Let's try and make make a cool product that people like using uh, instead, and then the money will follow. Yeah. Uh, later on, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think um, I think simplifying the model is is a great idea because I mean, I think people are, as I said, people are burnt out on all of these subscription models and the different ways yeah. different ways they work, and also it's 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 a trust building exercise too isn't it like that you want to say oh i want to trust these guys they're being very transparent in their in their pricing and i think the world we're in today particularly post covid is people want transparency they want to trust the people they want to work with they want to feel like there's there's some authenticity there's something behind whoever they're engaging with and so i think that time has really come back if you like where mm -hmm. The, the the fundamentals and the principles of the company make a huge difference. Definitely, and 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 we could tell when we started out ten years ago in, in 2013 that we had to explain this model a lot. Uh, we had to like people really didn't get it. Wait, so you pay per minute, and how how much am I going to pay? It's not transparent because I yeah. don't know how much gonna, how much I use. Well, you do if you just look at your phone bill from your mm -hmm. current carrier. It says it right there. But mm -hmm. but you know, like we had to explain that a lot. We don't really see that anymore. Like people are 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 starting to to definitely warm up to this a little bit more. Um, pay for the usage instead, and and you know, I guess the same. You you don't pay for for water and electricity and stuff like that per employee, right? So you pay for what you use. <laughs> That's fair. 
So what, uh, what, uh, given your background with, uh, you know, being a DJ and that, I mean, what, what, what experiences from the DJ world did, has, it, has it helped you in your entrepreneurial journey? Well, I think if you are a, a DJ or a musician, but actually spe spe specifically a DJ, if, if you have to be an entrepreneur if you want to make it and if you want to actually, you know, uh, get further than just playing at the local bar. Um, mm. You have to be somewhat of an entrepreneur because you are your own business. You have to uh, do your own sales, your own marketing. You have to uh, run run your your PR campaigns. You have to uh, you know uh, uh, plan your tour, all that stuff in the beginning, at least when un until you 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 get so big that you can have a team around you. But most don't. So uh, I, I've actually seen a lot of my old DJ colleagues. Uh, now are in really, really big positions uh, at, at huge international companies. And I think it really boils down to that, that you have to, you have to have some kind of business sense uh, to, to kind of make it. Yeah. And, and I guess, as you said, you have to be pretty self-sufficient and pretty self-reliant. And obviously these are, you know, when you start your business, you wear a lot of hats. So you need yeah. to do early on, do, do the same uh, kind of thing. And then, as you said, there comes a point, right, where you have to start to look at how do I carve out the pieces that maybe I'm not very good at, or maybe I don't have the time for. And oftentimes mm -hmm. that's a part that people find a little difficult. Yeah, and, and and I think most entrepreneurs who you know have founded the first company have a really hard time letting go, right? Like 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 actually trusting someone else to do it because they yeah they can probably not do it as good as you can, maybe they can, yeah. but what if they can do it ninety percent and then you have so many more hours a day yeah. uh, to to do what you're really good at, right? So uh, that's hard though. Uh, I think that's something I had to learn too in the beginning. Uh, you know, letting go and, and trusting. Uh, I think we all have a little bit of trust issues uh, as entrepreneurs when it comes to that. Yeah, no, and you're right. I mean, maybe they could do it, you know, nearly as well. Or maybe they're just going to do it differently. And that's even harder sometimes to deal with. <laughs> uh, uh, but I guess I guess that's when you really got to focus on the output and sort of say, okay, if they're getting the result that we want and they're doing it, you know, they're doing it their way, uh, but it's getting us the result and it's not disrupting things. So... I just have to bite my lip and let them do it their way. Yeah, exactly, exactly. That's the only way to go. I mean, you're, you're never going to grow a business if you think you can do it all yourself. Um, that's just the, the, the fact. So mm -hmm. uh, the sooner you, you, you get that into your head and, and start actually letting go, the sooner you're going to grow your business. Mm -hmm. What were some of the what, what have some of the surprising things been about your journey, like things that you weren't expecting as you built this business? Um. I think I think what I learned in the beginning was really um, we kind of touched on it earlier. Um, mm -hmm. When you start a business, you or at least a tech company, you're told that you need to go raise two hundred million dollars from a VC, yep. otherwise you can't do it. Mm -hmm. um, now we were in a position, like I said before, we we uh, I had just met my my now wife. Uh, we just started dating, and uh, I had built this uh, proof of concept of of what tells you and and. And she had, uh, you know, some experience, you know, starting a, a business uh, in the U.S. And and so so we started, to, you know, we decided to start this thing together. And um, then came the thing. Okay, so we need to raise some money, and we start going out to angel investors and some VCs. And and it, well, one of the things is obviously, oh, are we going to invest in a couple? How long have you been dating? You're not married. Okay, cool. <laughs> Bye. Um, that that that's one one big hurdle, obviously. But but also. It's completely wrong that you have to do this. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, you can. Um, I'm so happy today that we didn't take VC money. Uh, we own almost all of our company together. We, we've given some shares to, to employees and, yeah. and and so on. But but besides that, we, we own the, the business and we can take it exactly where we think we need to take it and, and, and build the product we enjoy building instead of having some VCs breathing down our neck. Because the second you take that kind of money, it's mm -hmm. not your company anymore. You're just yeah. working for them. Um, so I, th I think that's a mis 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 uh, conception that, that, that people think they have to go do that. Yeah, it might take longer to to not raise money and, and take the, the, the long route, but it's a lot more fun in the end. Yeah. yeah. And I think the other thing that people don't, uh, you know, sometimes overlook the fact is, yeah, you can go to the VC and you can get money, but you may be one of a, you're one of a bunch of companies in that fund, right? So at the yeah. end of the day, um, if one of the, if one of the other companies does really well, it doesn't really matter how you do. 
And, yeah, exactly. and therefore, you know, they're not they're not really you know, you're not really getting all this power behind you. Plus, you're plus what we heard during up until, you know, the economy turned was like, as you said, hyper growth, hyper growth, push everything into sales and marketing into Google ads, whatever, and hire three billion salespeople. Yeah. And and of course, you know, you end up with a lot of debt on the balance sheet and all of that. And uh, and, you know, profitability is way off. And then suddenly when we, we get into this economy, they all turn around and say, oh, path to profitability. <laughs> is really important. So the ones who've done it the hard way, like ourselves at Pipeline and like yourselves, then suddenly look like uh, we're like, yeah, it is. This is the way to go. And this is the way to build a business. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm, but but uh, let me say like this. I'm, I'm not saying it's wrong to take VC money. And, and I'm yeah. not saying that that it's not a route to go. And it might be for some, but it's a different type yeah. of business you're building. And it's a different type of entrepreneur you are. Uh, there are people that are good at doing that. There are people that are good at raising money and, and that's what they do. Mm -hmm. And then they build a company and, and maybe it will succeed, probably it won't, but they will be able to cash out a bunch of bonuses on the on the way, uh, you know, so they make a few million off of it. So it doesn't really matter. Um, that's a whole different kind of, of running a business and, and a whole different model that I'm not into, but yeah. I'm not saying it's it's not for some people. Yeah, no, I'm just saying it's not for some people, but I do think uh, it, it has been presented probably over the years yeah. as the only way to go. So it's great to see companies like yours, companies like ours, we're showing that you can. Yes. And I think the big lesson is, yes, does it take longer? Sure. Um, mm -hmm. But however, uh, when you see these other businesses, yeah, but they can run up debt a lot quicker than you can. So, you know, there you go. Swings and roundabouts. At the end of the day, I prefer <laughs> to be in the position that, you know, you're in. So listen, Peter, this has been fascinating. All of Peter's information will be below this video. But before we go, tell us a little bit more about you and Telzio. Oh, what? <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a good question. What, what, should, what should I dive into? I mean, we can we can dive up to to today what we're doing now. Because yeah, yeah, exactly. Ob obviously, that that whole industry yeah. <laughs> is changing a lot at the yeah. moment. Uh, you, know, you know, obviously, we're doing a lot of stuff with AI at the moment. We we knew back in. 2017, I think we registered AIattendant.com uh, and, and trained now because we knew where things were going, right? So we've been, been preparing for this. It's very exciting. We're we, we launching new, some new products. But what I really think is, is exciting at the moment is, is, is the whole uh, communications industry is completely changing. Uh, it used to be that you have a phone number and an email address, but that's not good enough anymore. You have to be available where your customers mm -hmm. are now like that, that so if they like texting you on a like a dm on, on on instagram or something like that well then that's where you need to answer mm -hmm. uh so we're building some tools around that and that's fun i mean what really sparked that was i was buying a car last year and um i was at a dealership i had just driven it and, and all that i was actually settled on it but uh then then you know i, I i've decided to go home and think about it overnight so i got the business card from the from the dealer and then I sent them an email at night uh, saying something like, uh, hey, what, what's the, I liked it a lot, but what's the price and delivery time if I want the one yeah. with the bigger engine? And nothing. I didn't hear anything. So the next day I went down to a different brand, different make, uh, uh, but, you know, pretty much the same car. Test drove though, that one. They had it uh, in stock. I took it home the same day. And a month later, I got an email from him <laughs> saying, oh, hey, by the way, yeah, I missed your email. Uh, do you still need that information? No, I don't. I bought a, a different car, and and yeah, I could have called you because your phone number was on the business card, but I I felt like emailing you at, at that given yeah. time. So you have to be available where you otherwise you you don't sell. That's just the fact. Yeah, uh, yeah, and, and I think that's and I think the car one is a great uh, great one because I mean I started that a number uh, a while back where you know once I once I got all the information figured out how they price all these things or lease them and this, then I would only do emails with the. Uh, Car, just drive them mad say oh you want to come in come in and meet and look and i'd say no 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 just send me the information that i requested yeah. and then and then once uh once i finally get all the information then i'll say okay now i'll come in and chat to you <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but but yeah it's, that's how it is yeah 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 but that's that's that, that's fantastic and uh and as you said so Tesio is the Tesio is doing well and uh and and a growing company yeah we, we're doing good and it, and it's it's fun because um Obviously, we did really good during COVID, like all our competitors. Yeah. But it's really fun to see how their curve is just all the way down now. Like mm -hmm. all of them are, are look the same. It's like a little mountain around uh, 2020. But ours has just kept going up. Uh, and, and I really think it's just because we have happy customers. Uh, you know, things work. We haven't been down since 2016. And, you know, we have a good product. And, and I think that's really the main thing at the end of the day. It's a good yeah. product. People who like it. Yeah. 
And I, I know I think that's a that's a key point just to finish up on is you have to have a good product because uh, let's face it, if you do if you do pump all your money into sales and marketing and you can get out great messages and whatever, but at the end of the day, you're not going to build longevity and stickiness if you don't if the product itself doesn't deliver. Exactly, and and you know we didn't have the luxury of being able to just buy our our customers with mm -hmm. with ads. Yeah. You know, our, our industry has like it's 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 seven six seven hundred dollars per click for a Google ad per click. Mm -hmm. we, we, so so yeah, the math adds up because of, of the retention and, and so on. But but you know we didn't have that upfront cash to buy those customers, so we had to figure out how do we do it otherwise, and then we had to make sure that once we get those customers, we make sure they stay right. Yeah. We can't just uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, and, yeah, and, and, but it's great because at the end of the day, it's a great it's a great result for the customers because they got people who actually care about like getting them and and servicing them and retaining mm -hmm. them. So uh, listen, thanks again, Peter, for today. As I said, all Peter's information will be below this video. But uh, and uh, thank you for today. Thank you for watching, listening. I'll see you all again soon. Thank you. Mm -hmm.